Well, hello there. I'm Sandy Alnock. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm going to show you a couple of sketchbooks. They're all accordion sketchbooks. This one I created mm, maybe four or five years ago, I think, at this point. And there is a video of it here on YouTube, and I will link it in the doobly-doo down below. It was a speed video, very much hyper speed, because that's a lot of work to fit into a YouTube video. This one is one created for, for and in a class and it's much more controlled. I wanted to teach specific inking techniques. So we took each element one by one and learned how to make the values change, learned how to make the textures and stuff. So the ink sketching class is over on my website. I'll link to that down, down below. But on the back of that one is this. It was kind of a Rorschach experiment that I ended up doing or being forced into doing. I'll tell you about that in this video and I'll do one page just because I'm going to try again to do another sketchbook like this. A student of mine just signed up for the ink sketching class and let me know that apparently the Pentallic accordion sketchbook is no longer available. So you have to make your own or go find an accordion sketchbook that has good paper for inking. And that's up to you. Everybody has different taste. I'm using Canson XL because I like how it inks up. It does a pretty decent job and it's very close to what that Pentallic paper is. I do use the Pentallic sketchbooks a lot, so I have a number of them. But I scored it at four inches and then I cut the sheets down to about six and a half inches. These are going to be four by six panels. But knowing me and how my folds never come out perfect, I decided to adhere it first and then trim the top and the bottom. So on one of them, I glued one panel to the back side of the other, but that takes away the ability to draw on one side. So if you want to stretch that further and get more use out of the paper, you can put tape on the side of one. And once I finish one side, I'm going to tape the other side with clear tape and then peel off the white tape. When I was finished with getting the whole thing taped together, I trimmed off down to six inches, the top and the bottom of the sketchbook. Just do it little by little and you'll get through the whole sketchbook. Don't try to cut all through the whole thing all at once. And then you can add a cover on it. Now, one of the things I decided to also use in this project was this brush pen that I have not used. And it's a piston brush pen which is kind of cool, but then like, how do you use it, right? The top doesn't come off. Like you can try to un unscrew it and nothing happens. So I'm gonna use my carbon black ink, platinum carbon black. It is a waterproof ink. So once it's dry, it's not going to lift. So if you wanna watercolor it afterwards, you can certainly do that. And what you do, at least what I figured out to do is to stick the brush into the ink itself and then start turning the piston, have it closed up um, all the way down to the bottom and then lift up so you can kind of see it going up and down sucking in like a like a little baster it doesn't do it as well as my fountain pens do but this thing was cheap so I'm not going to fault it uh, supplies by the way are in the dooley do if you want one of these brush pens I don't think this thing will ever recover from having good old black ink in it it's not going to be something you can change out ink because like it's just going to be very black on the inside, but that's fine. It comes in a pack of a couple of them. So if you want to have a couple colors, you can do that. And then I added covers. I just cut some heavy duty chipboard like from the back of a pad of paper and glued it on. And on the inside, I went around the edges. And then I decided also to go around the outside on the edges just to make sure that the any of the cardboard that shows that chipboard, it's going to look black because I want to just glue a black piece of paper on the cover of this. So I'll have a cover. And when you glue the paper to the inside, if you cut the, the cardboard to a little bit bigger than the sketchbook, like four and a quarter by six and a quarter, um, then you'll just need to make sure that that lip on the inside doesn't have cardboard showing and it works out pretty nice. So sketchbook done. And I wanted to make this one, one that I can just sit on the sofa and just mindlessly doodle. So this will take me a while to get done as the other one did. But 
What happened to the other one is that I accidentally had a pen bloop when I was on an airplane. And it just, it just put out a ginormous blob of ink. And the whole pen was leaking on my hand. It was such a mess. And I was on the window seat. And I had two sleeping people next to me. And I tried to figure out if I could wake them. And then if I got up, what was I going to do with this mess that I had around me? Because, oh my gosh, it was just going to be horrible. Am I going to get inky fingers on? Like my whole right hand was covered with it. And then I got some on my left hand. And I just decided I'm just going to close the book and I'm going to let the paper soak up the ink and see if I can recover it. And then I started making these crazy Rorschach type drawings. So here I'm using a pipette to just kind of move some ink onto the page. I let some of it be bubbles so it would maybe make some splatters. You can apply the ink in any old way you want. And then it's just a matter of doodling and figuring out what you want your design to be. I had those weird two horizontal lines and I had two things that looked like eyeballs and I wanted to basically hide the fact that it's Rorschachy. So in the full sketchbook that you saw the flip through of, most of them you couldn't really tell that there were major blobs for each one. And I had created those blobs the same kind of way as I'm creating this one. Some of them with small blobs, some of them with really big ones. And then I just started moving around the page to try to make a composition that I was happy with. Now you might be thinking, gee whiz, why do you have to worry about a composition when you're doodling? Well, for me, I like to feel like there's something holding it together, that it's not just lines on a page. So I started with that brush pen. I just wanted to see what drawing what the brush pen was like. And I didn't have a lot of control. I'm used to more control using a fountain pen. But I just started making some splooty splotchies in different places to pull that ink around so that it wasn't necessarily going to look as as, you know, I don't know, controlled, as reflective on one side and the other. And at one point, I started seeing a square in the middle, and I thought, hmm, I wonder if I could use a square. Later on, I did decide that the two big blobs were going to end up being a problem if I did the square, so a lot of it gets changed as I go. But then I got out my uh, medium fountain pen nib. Now, my medium is generally the one that I use the most often, your own choice is obviously up to you if you like a really fine line, but I like to have my, my drawing kind of move along, especially when I'm just doing a quick doodle like this, and this is just gonna be a sketchbook full of them. My thought is, like if I can start to figure out enough ways to make a class out of these kind of fun doodles, but I don't want them to all just be the same splooty techniques and the same kinds of lines. So I want to come up with some other techniques and that's what this sketchbook will be practicing. So let me know in a comment if that's something that would be interesting to you to dive deeper into how to make a composition work in a doodle. Um, different ways of applying the ink and stuff will be, um, you know, that initial splooty of ink will be included. But I want it to be more, I think, a compositional class because I just have a lot of people that you know, they start doing a doodle and then they feel like, well, gee whiz, mine doesn't look anything like yours and yours shouldn't look like mine. But I'd like to figure out if I can figure out how to explain what I mean when I'm looking at my composition, uh, then maybe that will make a good class. That'd be something that would be helpful because the same ideas apply to other mediums, other types of drawings, looking for a flow in the drawing, looking for something cohesive in it. And in something like a doodle, it's a little hard sometimes to find that. And I don't usually know until I'm well into it exactly what's going to happen. Like, I, I wasn't sure where this one was going to go. Like I said, originally I thought that square was something I might play off of. And it would be really cool if I made a square and you could certainly drop the ink in such a way that you could make a square. Maybe we'll do that in the class. Um, and then draw something in it like another subject, a scene or something it would be kind of fun or draw an animal in there, make that a window into something, like somehow turn that into something. This 
this did not go that direction. But the first step that I take in a doodle like this is to try to fix all of the little itty bitty edges on all of the blobs of, of ink. Because most of the time when you're just slapping stuff on this way, you're gonna get sometimes an edge that has little points to it, especially, if, you know, like the one that had the bubble that exploded, that created little points. And those are great jumping off points to create a line. And then I'm just trying to connect different sections and just draw almost webs going from one to the other to kind of hold them together, that sort of thing. And I wasn't thinking really hard about it, but again, like spending time consciously working in a sketchbook to try to see what I can develop and what I can explain in a class, that's kind of what I'm thinking I might try. So we'll see if I get there anytime soon, but uh, it's also going to be a great thing to do in the winter when I'm just sitting around uh, in the fall and winter, like needing something to do. And I will be traveling again in December, so maybe I'll take it on the plane again and hope that I don't get a big bloop. That would be really nice not to have another bloop. I don't know what caused it. I've never had a fountain pen go that way on me. I just, it just hasn't happened, but nonetheless, sometimes that, that just is going to go there. Okay, so here's where I started thinking, okay, well, what if that was more of a flower shape? And, you know, drawing some petals around something, it's real easy to change that if you change your mind and say, okay, flowers doesn't really work. So I started by just trying to find some of the blobs that look like flower centers and see if I can turn them into petals around them. And then some of them were like a really big type of center. So I made really big petals. And I wasn't worried about trying to make petals on all sides either. Because as it started developing the floral theme, which, you know, was just a happenstance thing, this could have been any kind of theme, but it came out to be a floral theme just because of that one that seemed like it could be a flower. But there's a lot of problems that goes into trying to make all of this work together. Because if you're trying to make a beautiful even number of petals around each flower, that's not going to happen. So you have to be satisfied with only seeing parts of some of them and, you know, only having petals on one side or another, not necessarily on all of it. And I also knew I wanted to go back in and break up some of the blacks, but I wanted to make sure I got some of the flowers in so I'd kind of know where the blacks could go. And you'll see what I mean by that when I get the brush pen back out. So just kind of playing around with a few of the interior areas inside that, that box. And some of them got really fussy. And I was trying to decide if I wanted to let it get fussy and get into more detail. But I really liked some of the open shapes, those big petals and uh, that sort of thing. Also note that it's still very, very wet because I did drip an awful lot of ink on there. And I was being super careful not to make any messes and dip my hand in something. But there were a couple of areas where I put small, you know, um, little pebbles almost that are joined together, uh, rounding out their corners and continuing the black under them. And that's what I mean by joining the black in other areas. Instead of just letting those initial lines be there, I want to try to incorporate the blobs into the design so it doesn't look like the design was driven by the fact that there were blobs. I don't know if that makes sense. Maybe it doesn't. I'm tired. So I'm, I might not be making sense. I might be speaking gibberish. Would not be the first time. But I mean, it, it was really fun to just play with this again because it's been a couple years since I worked on that other sketchbook and had all those other pages done. And here I'm getting the brush pen back out and I just kept squinting at it. And I was looking for areas where I could join a wider section of black and, you know, found places where I can do that around some of the flower petals so that, you know, I had some interest around there. I had a little bit of detail, but not too much. And at one point I thought, well, what, what would happen if I put some polka dots in there? Some, uh, just a little line of dots and make that a small theme across the drawing. Like maybe that would be something that, that I could bring in because 
I was trying to find, again, something to get the whole composition to hang together because that big square felt very big and static and kind of crazy. So creating these, these circles that would get bigger also had a bit of dimension that they carry with them as they get larger. And then I, you know, would go fill in in a couple of spots some lines, which might end up turning black. I wasn't really sure. So if there was an area where I was thinking about putting dark area in, I would just put it in there anyway with just lines. And then I could always go and darken it if, if indeed I wanted that to be. I wanted to be careful not to put all of the black in too early in the drawing because it, it's real easy on some of those other pages in the other sketchbook. They got very, very black. And a lot of that was because I got too excited about that portion of it too close to the, the start of it and figured out that choosing a few sections that I definitely wanted to go black and then others where I just put in lines because I could always go darken them later would work a little bit better. There is a class for beginners and it also has a flower lesson that I thought I'd show you just so you can see the difference. This is from Whimsical Sketching Jumpstart. It's a level one class and you're doing flowers, putting some black in the background as well as some details but when we draw the flowers in that class we just start with circles and they're all circles of different sizes and then you just learn how to make the petals for each of the different flowers it's just got a lot more simplicity to it in terms of the construction of it rather than the wackiness <laughs> that is this drawing because I let a lot more spontaneity take place here it's not as planned out. I'm changing things along the way and trying to make more irregular black shapes. Now I started looking at this center portion because I had that little swirl that happened down the middle and it was kind of bothering me that, that it was just almost this weird divide. So I started blocking in some more dark areas around the middle just to start to connect them and get rid of that box. It was a real good way to make the box disappear by joining it left and right and in the middle and, and with more blocks of black around them and then making some wavy lines indicating maybe some flower petals off the page that kind of thing and just as I'm working the thing I'm thinking in my head because lots of people want to know what an artist thinking in their head I'm thinking I think I'm done no I'm not done I think I'm done no I'm not done <laughs> I, I often was wondering, should I just, should I do more here? No, maybe I shouldn't. Yeah, maybe I should. No, maybe, maybe I shouldn't. But that is just the way drawings go, you know? And the fact that it's in a sketchbook is also much less pressure. I love that about having a sketchbook to do this because then I can just play. There's no expectation that it's going to be a stunner of a drawing, but it gives me something in which I can practice and start figuring out you know especially when I'm working on something that's going toward a class like this figuring out what I can teach what the lessons are and what might be helpful to people because if it's something that's only helpful to me uh, I don't know if it's always worth putting a class together but I haven't done any classes in this more abstract flowing kind of doodly style Necessarily, I've done a couple of videos on YouTube in my pen and ink playlist, but not necessarily classes. So that's why I'm thinking of giving it a try at some point in the near future. But again, let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. So I'm, I'm at the point where I'm thinking I'm close to done, right? I'm close to done. I want to put in some more of the dots just to make sure that I get them spread out across the whole drawing. And every time I thought I was done, I would see something else that bugged me. And I would look at it, it turned upside down, turn it right side up, I'd squint. And I still had two big eyeballs. <laughs> they were kind of making me a little crazy. And I also still had that swirly line in the middle. So I started filling in to join that with, you know, knock back some of it, join it with the flowers to give them slightly more outline, but not trying to just outline all the flowers. Like that, that would be too much. 
So I'm putting a little line work in between on some of them. And depending on whether or not I want a bigger black space in there, I don't know. There's just so many things that, that I was trying to figure out. I thought, let me open it and close it again. And maybe that'll tell me. And then I suddenly had noticed that this corner down here where I had put some real squishy uh, brush pen lines and they were very dry brushy. I hadn't worked on that at all. I hadn't cleaned any of it up. So I wanted to get rid of that fussiness. And that's where the rest of this little work is going because as I saw the fussy parts, I realized I wanted to break up some of those shapes. I wanted to cover some of them entirely. And then I wanted to make some of the petals have a little bit more in them. Not all of them, but this brush pen does a really nice job of making that nice thick line. So take advantage of that. And just looking at areas that are too messy, like this little spot here has too many small shapes in it. So I just got rid of some in order to try to make something a little more cohesive out of it. And, you know, squinting all the time to try to see, are there blobby shapes from that original inky mess that I made that are still in existence that I can get rid of without really doing a lot more to it. And for the most part, I still do see the two big blobs, but I'm not too unhappy with the rest. Um, I, it's possible that I'll go back and work on it some more and try to get rid of a little bit more of that. But I don't know. What do you think? Is it done? Is it not done? I think it's close if it's not done. But there's still that, you know, kind of horizontal, almost an oval at the bottom, almost like a landform. Well, I guess it's at the top since I'm working on it upside down. Hard to know whether it's right side up or upside down. But anyway, it's all finished at least. And I'd like to know what you think of it. Is that something you'd like to learn? Let me know and I will talk to you again very soon. Because I'll have another video for you in a couple days. Take care. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit the like button because it really helps the channel out. And I'll see you next time. Bye.